This is the Nivelle Ski Resort. It closed in 2009 after being open for over a hundred years. It used to be a grand hotel where New Yorkers would go to spend indulgent weekends skiing and going to the spa. But it fell into disrepair, and when we went, it looked like this. It's just one of the 45 American ski areas to shut down in the last 20 years. The ski industry is struggling, but will this be the end? Skiing gained in popularity through the 80s and well into the 90s and early 2000s. But last season, ski visits were down 11%. The number of alpine skiers fell from over 11 million to just over 8 million. Now the number of ski visits are back to what they were 30 years ago. We went to Warren, Vermont and spoke to Wynn Smith, former owner and now president of Sugarbush Mountain. I think it's headed in the right direction, but I think there's some challenges. You know, the, the growth in the ski industry has been pretty flat. You know, we've been sort of averaging about 55 to 60 million skier visits. There are only about 9 million people, maybe 10 million, that actually ski. So as a percentage of our population, it's really small. It's partially because skiing's base is getting older. According to the National Ski Areas Association, baby boomers represent 21% of all skiers and snowboarders, which is down from 36% a decade ago. The millennials' share is growing, but they don't ski as often and take shorter trips. For every boomer who retires from the slopes, two millennials are needed to replace the income generated by the older skier. Even millennial skiers are getting out less six or seven days per winter compared to 12 to 15 a decade before. A few years ago, um, we were at a, a National Ski Area Association presentation, and the president was saying, you know, the ski industry has some problems, because all these baby boomers who made the ski industry, they're starting to age, they're gonna ski less, and he said they're gonna die. Now that's the facts. And he said the problem is, is you look at the millennial population, which is equal to the baby boom population, they're not skiing. It's having some significant effects. The NSAA says that there were 45 fewer ski areas in operation during the 2018 to 2019 season than there were just 20 years ago. Still, if you looked at the raw numbers, you probably wouldn't think that it's that bad. Take the winter of 2016, for example. Some 20 million people went skiing, and the sport contributed $20 billion to the U.S. economy and supported around 200,000 jobs. But it's not like that every winter. During the years of low snowfall, skier visits dropped by 5.5 million. Climate change is another big issue facing the ski industry. In ski seasons without much snowfall, skier numbers plummet. Ski towns and the ski industry take a $1 billion hit. Home values near ski resorts could drop by at least 15% due to warmer winters. And at lower elevation ski areas like Utah, Idaho, Nevada, and parts of California, they could fall as much as 55%. The amount of snow in the Western United States has seen an average yearly drop of 41% since the early 1980s according to research published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. That means that the snow season shrunk by 34 days. Data from NASA shows that we could see a rise in temperature between 2 and 6 degrees Celsius by the end of the 21st century. Lastly, most millennials simply can't afford it. And if they don't know how to ski, it's prohibitively expensive to try it. Plus, college loan debt has doubled in the last 10 years. Paying interest on their loans has left men and women in their 20s with less money to spend on recreation. For new skiers, costs rise exponentially. They must have warm clothing, buy a ticket and rent equipment, and pay a ski school to learn how to slide down a hill without wiping out. That's not even mentioning that most have to travel a long way to do it. According to NSAA research, 
More than four out of five newcomers exposed to this experience eventually decide not to take up the sport. After all, with the risk of bodily injury, cold, discomfort, and a possible fear of heights, who could blame them? So what are mountains doing about it? They said we're pretty good at getting people to try skiing, we're terrible at retaining them. We're retaining about 7%. So think of any business, if you spend all the money marketing, you get the customer in the door and you only keep 7% of them, that's a terrible business model. So what do we have to do better? Well, we have to understand how to teach people. We have to motivate people to want to learn and then continue learning. And a lot of people are doing some very interesting things. Here at Sugarbush, we've developed something called a first time to lifetime program. So for about $300, you get three two hour lessons you get your rental equipment, and if you complete those three days, we give you a season pass for the rest of the season. They're not alone. Whistler Blackcomb started the Never Ever Days program, a $25 ticket and rental for new skiers. Women normally make up about 30% of skiers, but they're 65% of Never Ever participants. Minorities are 40% of the program, compared to 11% usually. But this just addresses one aspect of the millennial problem. What about the price of skiing for non-newcomers? In 2008, a man named Rob Katz came up with an idea. Katz was a Wharton grad and had worked at Apollo Consulting Group, but was also a lifelong skier. He became CEO of Vail Resorts two years before, and he was ready to roll out what would become the most driving force in skiing the multi-pass. But now, they're not the only one on the market. In 2017, a few private investors banded together to form Altera, a new skiing conglomerate that had bought some of America and Canada's biggest resorts. Through the winter of 2017 to 2018, America's biggest mountains were picking sides. Sugarbush is the most recent acquisition just two months ago, Sugarbush agreed to be sold to Altera. Its former majority owner, Wynn Smith, who had run the resort for some 18 years, was to stay on as president. Now, Altera and Vale's passes can be swiped at 58 North American resorts, as well as a handful of resorts in Oceania and Europe. In 2018, Altera said orders were ahead of expectations by 30%, and the company was on track to book $1.5 billion in annual revenue. It's become a huge part of the industry, and some people think that it'll stop skiing's decline. But others aren't so certain. In the next 20 years, as climate change's effects become more pronounced, the ski industry will be facing even greater challenges. The aging consumer base means that the ski industry's income will keep declining as the years go on. So does this actually mean that skiing is going to become a relic like the Nivelle Resort? Not yet. A lot of people who are passionate about the sport are fighting to keep it up and making money. But there are some big hurdles that the ski industry is going to need to jump over to keep from going downhill. Have you ever skied before? And what did you think about the cost? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you click subscribe, ring the bell for post notifications, and we'll see you next time.